Well, good morning and welcome to God's house. What a glorious morning. And as you may have recognized from uh, last week's service, for those who are watching online, uh, we want to uh, indicate what our licensing is for our hymns and our liturgy. And our license number is 10001254949. So that should make us legal. And uh, today we're going to hear about God's compassion, his compassion on us, his children, our Heavenly Father. And so we begin our service this morning as we open up our hymnals to him, 571, God loved the world so that he gave. remain standing as you are able in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit Amen. beloved in the Lord let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins to God our Father beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness our help is in the name of the Lord Amen. I said I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord Sorry. 
Upon this, your confession, I, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant to the word, announce the grace of God unto all of you. And in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Let us pray. Almighty eternal God, in the word of your apostles and prophets, you have proclaimed to us your saving will. Grant us faith to believe your promises that we may receive eternal salvation. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And the congregation may be seated as we continue with our readings. Our Old Testament reading this morning comes to us from the book of Exodus, the 19th chapter. They set out for Rephidim, and came into the wilderness of Sinai, and they encamped in the wilderness. There Israel encamped before the mountain, while Moses went up to God. The Lord called to him out of the mountain, saying, Thus you shall say to the house of Jacob, and tell the people of Israel, You yourselves have seen what I did to the Egyptians, and how I bore you on eagles' wings, and brought you to myself. Now, therefore, if you will indeed obey my voice and keep my covenant, you shall be my treasured possession among all peoples. For all the earth is mine, and you shall be to me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. These are the words that you shall speak to the people of Israel. So Moses came and called the elders of the people and set before them all these words that the Lord had commanded him. All the people answered together and said, All that the Lord has spoken we will do. And Moses recorded the words of the people to the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Be and we read responsibly from Psalm 100. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come into his presence with singing. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him. Bless his name. For the Lord is good. His steadfast love endures forever and his faithfulness to all generations. And our epistle reading today comes to us from Paul's letter to the Romans. For while we were still weak, at the right time Christ died for the ungodly. For one will scarcely die for a righteous person, though perhaps for a good person one would dare even to die. But God shows his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Since, therefore, we have now been justified by his blood, much more shall we be saved by him from the wrath of God. For if while we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his Son, much more, now that we are reconciled, shall we be saved by his life. More than that, we also rejoice in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received reconciliation. Therefore, just as sin came into the world through one man, and death through sin, and so death spread to all men because all sinned, for sin indeed was in the world before the law was given. But sin is not counted where there is no law, yet death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over those whose sinning was not like the transgression of Adam, who was a type of the one who was to come. But the free gift is not like the trespass. For if many grace of God and the free gift by the grace of that one man, Jesus Christ, abounded for many. This is the word of the Lord. Amen. Please stand as we continue with the reading from the Holy Gospel. Amen. 
The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the ninth chapter. Glory to thee, O Lord. And Jesus went throughout all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the gospel of the kingdom, and healing every disease and every affliction. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion for them, because they were harassed and helpless, like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, The harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, pray earnestly to the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. And he called to him his twelve disciples and gave them authority over clean spirits to cast them out and to heal every disease and every affliction. The names of the twelve apostles are these. First Simon, who was called Peter, and Andrew, his brother, James, the son of Zebedee, and John, his brother, Philip and Bartholomew, Thomas and Matthew, the tax collector, James, the son of Alphaeus, and Thaddeus, Simon of Canaan, and Judas Iscariot, who betrayed him. These twelve Jesus sent out, instructing them, Go, nowhere among the Gentiles and enter no town of the Samaritans, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel, and proclaim as you go, saying, The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick, raise the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse lepers, cast out demons. You received without pain, give without pay. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you. And we now confess our common faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten and not made. Being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven, and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the Scriptures, and ascended into heaven. And sits at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I will be with the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead, and the life of the world to come. Amen. Well, the congregation may be seated as we continue with our children's message. And as we heard from our scripture text today, God's word tells us that the harvest fields are ripe. There are plenty, a bountiful group of people out there that are ripe for the picking. But so often when we hear analogies like that, we, we sometimes misunderstand what's being said. When he talks about harvest fields, he's not talking about the cucumbers that we have in our garden. What else do we have here? He's not talking about potatoes or Mr. Potato Head. No, he's, he's not referencing that either. He's not talking vegetables and produce. He's not talking corn or soybeans. No, in fact, and I'm, I'm going to ask my acolytes to come here. So, Ray, if you would come up here, and Jordan, if you would come up here. What he's talking about is people. He's, he's calling all of us to call and welcome people in to hear about the compassion of Jesus Christ. To invite them to hear his word and to believe. And what a great thing that I called and you came. And Jordan came. And so that's what we're called to do. We don't take our bags out and go get cucumbers and potatoes. We are called to go out and gather people, God's children. 
and bring them in and let them hear the compassion of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So we bow our head and say a word of thanks to God. Dear Lord, we thank you for reminding us that the harvest is plentiful and that the laborers are few. And as you bring Jordan and Ray forward and you bring all of your children forward to hear this message, you are also sending us out to call those who have not yet heard, those who do not believe, to come and hear the word of God. We thank you, Lord, our Heavenly Father, who shows us compassion. In Jesus' name, amen. So you may return to your seats and we'll sing to God and give him glory at this time with him 856. O Christ who called the twelve.
Grace, peace, and mercy to you from God our Father, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Our gospel reading today points to all the attributes that we want in a loving Father. Now I know it's not Father's Day yet, it's still a week away, but every day belongs to our Heavenly Father. Therefore, I'd like to highlight a few of God's fatherly attributes. He's loving. He's faithful. He's selfless. He's caring. He's protecting. He's giving. He's holy. He's merciful. Our reading takes all these attributes and sums them up into one word. Compassion. Jesus uses a picture of Lost sheep neglected in the desert. The people whom he met were faint. They were overdriven, afflicted, beaten down, exhausted by long, aimless driving, completely worn out and scattered about. They had no compassionate shepherd. That is, until Christ arrived and showed them all compassion. However, compassion is not a word that we see much in the world today, but yet compassion is something each of us as children crave. We desire, we long for compassion. Israel's leaders showed no compassion, just contempt towards the Messiah. As Matthew tells us in the beginning of our reading today, that the people were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. And yet the spiritual leaders didn't care. They didn't care to help the people. All they wanted to do was help themselves. And you've heard me talk about this time and time again, that Jesus, the Messiah, was bad for business for the Pharisees. Because the Pharisees, if they kept the people oppressed, if they kept the people needing to give more to earn salvation, to work harder to earn salvation. If they kept the people elevating them in public, lining their pockets, then everything was good. But here comes this man, our true God, who comes in and shows them compassion. There's no work needed on their end. There's no money that they can give that's somehow going to get them closer to salvation. But you know what the Pharisees did? They tried to remove hope in Jesus Christ to the people. In fact, in the verse right before our text today, they say that Jesus casts out demons by the prince of demons. That is Satan. This is what they're telling the people. We are hearing things like that in our society today. I like to call them nonsensical statements are being made. Why on earth would Satan kick out his own minions? It makes no sense. And that's some of the stuff that we're hearing today in our culture. By meaning, nonsensical has two meanings. The first is, it makes no sense. And the second is, that it's ridiculously impractical or ill-advised. Are we hearing those things today? Are we hearing in our culture and in our society nonsensical statements? Are we hearing things that are under the guise of being compassionate but only as long as you agree and accept what we're saying. Otherwise, you're not with us. We hear the world saying that God is no longer loving because God would not allow what's happening today to take place in our world. That's what we're hearing. That's the feeling many people are getting. And they're buying into the lies, just like the Pharisees' lies, 
But I'm here to tell each and every one of you, that's just nonsensical. It makes no sense. We know exactly why things are happening today in our world. We know why there's rioting and looting. We know why one group is pitting another against another group. We know why there's hate and anger. And it's called sin. We live in a broken world. And sin has crept in from the very beginning. Just as we heard in our Old Testament text, just as we heard in Paul's letter to the Romans, sin was there from Adam to Moses before the law was ever given. And yet we continue in our society to hear these nonsensical statements that somehow you are not compassionate because you do not believe in the lies of the evil one. Somehow you are not compassionate because you won't let people live a sin-filled life. Because somehow you wanting people to be in heaven with God our Father. Somehow you wanting people to repent and know that the kingdom of heaven is near. Is somehow wrong. Well that's nonsensical. It makes no sense. It's the most loving thing that we can do. Is to show someone their errors of their ways. That they have sinned. And they're in need of a Savior. And when they repent, ah, they receive forgiveness. They receive the promise of eternal life. And Jesus leads by example today in our reading, showing compassion. As he looked upon the crowds and saw them beaten down and tattered and torn. Verse 36 from our reading, when he saw the crowds, he had compassion for them. Compassion in the synoptic gospels in Matthew, Mark, and Luke only refer to God the Father and God the Son, Jesus Christ. They are the actors when the word compassion is used. The only ones. Compassion is the essence of Jesus. A true leader tending to his flock. Remember, they were harassed and helpless. And he says, come to me and I will give you rest. Jesus teaches his disciples the secret of leading a flock. What a true leader tending a flock looks like. He teaches them compassion. St. Paul writes, for while we were still weak, at the right time Christ died for the ungodly. We need not look any further than the cross. We need not look any further than the holes in our Lord's hands to see the ultimate price of compassion. True compassion was found at the cross for you and I. Paul preaches Christ crucified for all. His blood covers us and makes us righteous. His righteousness is counted to us as our righteousness. And then Jesus exhorts his 12 that he's called to go out that the harvest fields are ripe, but the laborers are few. Churches across America today are calling pastors. They're calling pastors to preach the word. Not changing one dot, not one iota of God's word. And to administer his sacraments rightly. But above that, they want what Jesus gives his people. Compassion. They want a pastor who will come in and love the people. Show them compassion when they're broken and hurting. Give them rest. And that's what Jesus has trained up his apostles. That's what we're training up our children and our confirmants to share the love of Christ and show compassion in a world that's otherwise broken. And he teaches them to pray. Pray that more would come to the field to be pastors. 
More and more of our churches today are without pastors. Over 400 churches that are viable today, that can afford a pastor, are without. They need men within our congregations raised up. We need women to go out and be raised up for that care ministry. To show compassion on God's children. It is through the gift of his spirit he leads us to tend to the lost and care for the broken. The healing balm in our society does not come from nonsensical rhetoric, which we hear every night on the nightly news, but from the true word of God, which we hear every day when we open the scriptures. Compassion is putting others before oneself like Christ the Lamb of God when he gave up his last breath, when he gave his life for you and I, his children. So 2,000 years ago, Jesus pointed to the source of all compassion when he taught us to pray to our Heavenly Father. We live in a broken world looking for someone to listen and show compassion. Give the world the gift of prayer and the hope of Jesus Christ, our crucified Lord. Much like Israel, people need to hear from God's disciples. That's you, from God's children. They need to hear the saving work of Christ crucified for all and the compassion he showed on the cross. Give to the world the compassion God lavishes upon you each day. Give the world Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. And know that every day is Father's Day when we think of our Heavenly Father and the compassion that he lavishes upon us. In Jesus' name, amen. Now may the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Amen. And we continue with the prayers of our church. And this morning in our prayers, we lift up Molly Smith and Sean Swanson as this coming Saturday they will be united together in holy matrimony before God and their families. We also lift up Connie Schlotick and her family at this time as they continue to mourn the loss of, of Dave. And we continue to give them hope and compassion in our Lord and Savior. We lift up Amy's mother, Thelma and Lois Jokums, that she may recover from her hip surgery. Betty Hagee, who has surgery tomorrow morning. We want to continue to lift up the people in our country, our military, our police officers, our fire departments, our paramedics, all first responders who lavish compassion upon us in times where in need. So let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we come before you this morning craving the compassion that you have shown to us through your one and only Son. We thank you for reminding us for all that you have done and that it is not by our works or treasures, but by the work of your Son, Jesus Christ, that we have been redeemed, we have been bought back. Lord, we thank you for being compassionate upon us when we turn away from you we patiently wait to bring us back. We also lift up all those that we prayed for and mentioned at the beginning of our prayers. And we take this time right now to lift up those who are on our hearts and minds. service of the sacraments. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. 
Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly meet, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Father, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who on this day overcame death in the grave and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me. In the same way also, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. service. Uh, we will be receiving Holy Communion at the back of the church in the narthex. One pew, one family at a time. We will be uh, exiting from the rear and working our way forward. And so for those of you who are sitting and waiting to be uh, excused, please open up your hymnals and join us for our communion hymns. The first one, one of my favorites, God Loves Me Dearly, hymn 392. 